The Jedi turned against me. Don't you turn against me. The year is 2015. That's one year before the death of the world's most famous gorilla. China's stock market crashed, refugee crises were sweeping the globe, terror in Paris, the biggest US election of our lives was approaching, the middle class was shrinking, everything was starting to fall apart. In Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens was released globally to excited and then soon after very let down and disappointed fans. Something went wrong. And Imani is not important, this is abominable culture. I love Star Wars. I still love Star Wars. Despite all the hate I might give it from time to time, despite how much Disney deserves that hate, and despite the lack of good or even decent content, I still love Star Wars. But you don't need me to tell you that Star Wars isn't what it used to be. Star Wars was a masterpiece of plot. It was more than the Mandalorian, more than the Skywalkers, more than the overhyped and underdelivered stories that we are so used to seeing. Star Wars is an expansive and outrageously fun universe that my childhood self would use to create long form stories that I would act out in my bedroom and in my backyard. Star Wars has done what only so few other properties have been able to do. It has transcended itself, becoming more than it ever was without needing to do so on its own. Star Wars has become what it is today because of the fans that exist in numbers large enough to build it. Star Wars is the prodigal son of the pop culture world, somehow always letting down every fan yet outdoing itself in countless ways. But those times are ending. The corporate and cookie cutter big box sludge has taken a seemingly unrepairable toll on the glory that was Star Wars. And it's the fans that know this. It's the fans that feel this. And it's the fans that would do anything to get Star Wars back on track. But what does back on track mean? Before Disney, before spin-off TV shows, diluted internet content and bad grab writing, we simply had Star Wars and it was enough. And with it, albeit behind the frequently poor dialogue and 50s style diner sequences, there was a magnificent story. That story is one of faith, friendship, honor, truth, justice, and of course, hope. It's about the balance between good and evil, and that if you stop trying, if you let go, nothing will stop that evil. Evil will corrupt. Evil will grow. Evil is a poison that can consume even the most prophetic of predictions. Evil without balance. Evil without being put in check can and will take hold and rot all that is good. But even then, it was about divinity and the push the universe has towards balance. That even during times of chaos and pain, the universe has been and always will fight for balance. That balance is the natural order of things, and even the strongest of ripples will one day fade. It's the story of strength finding its way through the crowds of weakness, strength rebuilding a world for peace and dismantling the ones of aggression. It's about the ebbs and flows of the singular conscious mind that is the collection of each living thing in the universe. It's about the force and not how we fight for it, but how it fights for us. We learn that even in the darkest of times, change can happen, balance can be brought back, peace can be achieved, and those who we have lost, those few who have passed on, who have went down the unrighteous path of evil being sold by a false reality, those people can be saved, those people can be redeemed, their evil is a sickness that can be cured, and even more than that, these stories had real world passion. The map paintings, the soundtrack, the set design, props, special effects, the grand plot, the choreography, oh, the choreography, I mean, these guys, some of them nobodies, soon to be somebodies and others, college graduates or lifelong talent rearing geniuses reinvented the sci-fi genre. No, heck with that, they practically made the sci-fi genre worth paying attention to, they made sci-fi digestible and successfully carried their story through to multiple generations over the course of six movies producing board games, video games, costumes, action figures, cartoons. I mean, Star Wars was a job creator. Star Wars was responsible for a small time in nationwide economic boom. Star Wars is sci-fi's Mayflower, delivering the genre to the new world of old, young, and in-between demographics. Star Wars was loved by all. Star Wars was a masterpiece of imperfection because that's what a masterpiece is. A collage of unintentional mistakes made by dreamers that could only be pieced together given that someone had the nerve to try. And try they did, and we got Star Wars. There's only so many times in a generation, so many times in one existence when that can happen, when one man or a group can conjure up a world so exciting and rich that everyone wants to be a part of it. And in our last 100 years, we've seen only a few of those stories breathe their everlasting life into our culture. Stories that will outlive the Marvel wave, stories that will be reconsumed for countless generations to come, stories that have already proven their resistance against time, stories that are the most well-known and invested in, and one of them 
is Star Wars. And as much as there's potential for other fictional worlds and characters to withstand the test of time, Star Wars has already proven to be an unmoving rock. But even then, its biggest test is now. I don't want to talk down the Star Wars. I don't want to pretend like this childhood defining world has wronged me so personally that I find myself on YouTube like so many others demanding for changes that I personally think would suit the franchise best. But that's kind of exactly what I'm going to do, at least a little bit. I don't want to demand anything. I don't want to throw rocks, but I do want to vent about Star Wars. I want to talk about what's wrong and why it's failing new and old fans, why we are growing tired, bored, and angry of the galaxy far, far away, why the company that owns that galaxy continues to bring it down along with the subscriptions to their streaming service, why they're continuing to try the same mistakes, hoping for people to either change their minds and taste or for somehow those mistakes to be so normalized that we simply accept them as the new Star Wars brand and in a way that's exactly what's happening but disney's desired outcome of box office and streaming success is not following their plan of making less than adequate content normal because that's what the normal of star wars has become less than adequate we've gone from bone chilling soundtracks goosebump inducing lore heart pounding choreography and visually and mechanically complex sets to a rehashed reused and recycled formula that lost all of its returns before the force awakens was ever released star wars has become disney's walmart star wars has become cheap star wars is failing star wars aside from the creative juggernauts like dave filoni and john favreau has lost its passion star wars has lost its dreamer and it's noticeable and we've seen it all we've seen the comparisons to what we have with scenes from the old republic to the force unleashed versus what we have now we've seen the potential of what countless stories can look like on the big screen we've read the comics played the games and it's time we've seen star wars take its next step forward and i know what everyone's thinking and it's been talked about to death. Kathleen Kennedy killed Star Wars. And considering not one decision could be made without her saying yes or no, I'd have to agree in that she had a major hand in dismantling Star Wars. And I mean really dismantling. And it seemed like she, in cooperation with Disney, have been neglecting rich stories for personal agendas. And we see that in almost all of our beloved properties, new and old. But even then, I don't think that's the problem. Although I can't stand Rey, the Obi-Wan series and it being a drastic letdown, the absolute disappointment the book of Boba Fett was, although those are my feelings, I don't think the problem lies anywhere within it being a personal, cultural, or political thing as many have come to believe. It genuinely comes down to the creatives who are running the show not knowing how to write a Star Wars story, or maybe simply just not wanting to write them at all and being paid to do it anyway. No one involved in Star Wars right now, aside from a small few, really feel like they care. And unless Unless they fix that, unless the higher ups at Disney put the right people in the right places, I think Star Wars is done, at least for a while. The thing is that now when we watch Star Wars, we feel nothing. It feels directionless, repetitive, uninspired. I mean, it's all the things Star Wars should never be. It's all the things that should be so easy to avoid when dealing with the Star Wars world. It's boring. And although it may be a nitpick, what really shows us that Star Wars is on its way out is how unconvinced we feel when we watch it. The acting looks forced, the writing feels fake, the set design is weak, the chemistry between characters is borderline barren, and the choices for the stories are simply uninteresting. Watching new Star Wars has become just something to do rather than an exciting break from reality. This is bad. Star Wars is becoming forgettable, and the numbers are showing it. The thing is, people don't want to pay for things they don't need or like people want the old star wars back people want incredible fight scenes majestic plots relatable honorable and stoic characters that don't feel like forced substitutes for the writer's own personal fantasy and in some cases just an empty and unrelatable figure they use to push the story along We want scenes and themes that overlap onto each other in unpredictable ways, the way movies are meant to be written. We want events to unfold because the story builds organically, therefore the characters must take action, therefore she cries, therefore they escape, therefore they are victorious, but instead we get stories in which events don't unfold and the stories don't feel organic at all. It feels as though scenes are preceding each other simply because that's what they need to do in order to get to the credits. Something happens and the next scene comes in and now we have a new scene over here and none of it feels connected. We want change. We want real emotions and struggle. We want struggle that doesn't seem cartoonish. We want struggle that doesn't seem like forced cultural propaganda. We want our stories to be epic examples of the hero's journey. We want things the way they look in the Old Republic game trailers. The heart and the dread felt in those few minutes have given Star Wars fans more to love about the fandom than any of the last hundred or so hours of Disney Star Wars content. I mean, 
the choreography, the camera work, the slow motion, the lightsaber physics and characters, the, the sleekness, and again, what Disney Star Wars is missing most of, the grand plot. We want the passion and the grit that comes from the Force Unleashed. We want the youth and the vigor that we saw in Ewan McGregor's duel against Maul. We want the wisdom and the sincerity shown through the Force, the way Qui-Gon paved the way for the Jedi to truly become one with that force. We want passion back, but instead we continue to get a dime a dozen TV shows with poorly written and in many cases, poorly casted stories. Everything about Disney Star Wars projects, aside from the animation, feels off. Like they keep hiring people that don't belong on these projects. And one bad decision after another has created what we have today, a stale and paper chasing franchise that has become the panic button for Disney execs who are low on their quarterly earnings, but that strategy is starting not to work for them and they know this. I love Star Wars. And if you clicked on this video and you got all the way to the end, then I know you love Star Wars too. You just don't love what it's become. I don't know if Disney will be able to pull off one of the biggest comebacks in cinema history. I don't know if the future projects like the Skeleton Crew, the Acolyte, Lando, or any of the feature length movies and development will be good or even passable. All I know is that we need a change. And finally, the last thing that people have always said is that Star Wars is for kids and we shouldn't expect too much from it but I don't think that's a good excuse anymore. That's a lazy cop-out. Even I, as a child, and I'm sure many of you knew how incredible and undeniably perfect The Dark Knight was. But The Dark Knight was not made for kids. It was made for Batman fans, which includes children, myself being one of them. And the same can be done with Star Wars. I'm not saying I want R-rated scenes and curse words in my Star Wars content because we don't need any of that for a more adult story. Thank you, Lord of the Rings. But children can handle higher concept stories and darker themes. We can create grand stories through Star Wars once more. We can have breathtaking stories and still sell merchandise like the mouse wants without making things juvenile. That is possible, but why? Why don't they just do it? And honestly, I think it's simple because they don't know how. And that's why I think Star Wars is over, at least for now.